and welcome to another, yeah, I'm going to say it, another build from this really beautiful kit I had. Pretty much I got this from Telford last year in 2017 and I've always wanted one of these kits to build and yeah, I just saw it and I thought I have to get it and it was for £20 as well. That's in UK money if you're wondering. You know, I don't know how much that is in dollars or Australian dollars or Canadian American. I do not know, but either way, it is actually decent for this kit. So anyway, this is the Haskara um, B5N2. I did a review on this. This is going to be my entry into Fargo scale models, uh, midway group bills, pretty much. So. Yeah, pretty much it is basically build anything that is from the Battle of Midway. Uh, that could be both American or Japanese. I think there was some other was some other forces. I don't know, but they are. Anyway, that's the kit. It is absolutely beautifully moulded, and I am really, really going to look forward to building this, guys, because it's so beautifully detailed. This Haskell kit. Now, one thing I have noticed before we even start building. Um, well, naturally, I'll start with which one I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing this one. This is the B5 NGK. Already, originally, this well, these are the Pearl Harbor schemes, pretty much. But uh, these aircraft were still on the carriers in 1942 because, if you think about it, December 1941 to May slash June 1942, it's not too much, far, pretty much. So anyway, this is the one I'm going to be doing. This was on the aircraft carrier Kagi, as you know if you've subscribed. It's one of my favourite aircraft carriers. And sadly, yes, this was lost at Battle of Midway when the Akagi went down, I believe anyway. I don't believe it got off the deck, but um, I'm not sure what happened to the crew. But uh, this was, I think, still on the aircraft, what, still on the aircraft carrier when it sank. So unfortunately, there's no whereabouts where this aircraft went. But it's, it's box art, it has a nice red band, nice red tail fin, green and black camo scheme. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, naturally we've got this whole beautiful lot of instrument detail going on into the cockpit area here, which is really nice. Now one thing I'm going to try and do actually is do this part here, where this is the actual pilot seat. Now one thing I noticed is this apply decal. So you've got to apply a decal to the seats to make the holes pretty much. Um, that's not really looking actually really good does it? Um, I think what I may do is I'm going to get the finest drill bit I can ever find and make some holes in that guys I think. I think that's what my plan of action is. But anyhow that's it. Uh, I'm going to start with the cockpit, as you do with any aircraft, and make basically work our way through to actually making this case up. Hmm. This is going to be a beautiful build. Right, so I said I'd make a start on the piece. I actually am really in the mood to actually start building. I don't know why, just uh, making a cockpit. I think it's because it's the type of seas I think it's actually really nice outside, but anyway, that's a long story. Anyhow, uh, I've done pretty much one piece and also put the seat onto the back of the, no, I don't know what it's called, plate anyway. But um, pretty much, I'm just pretty much putting all the tiny, tiny little pieces all together. Um, that is really what I'm doing. Uh, as you can tell, I have a new hobby blade, as you can tell. Just cut through nicely, like so. I'm actually, yeah, I'm repeating myself and I'm stuttering. So it's just pretty much cutting bits out very nicely. Um, I've forgotten what company it's from, but it was like a starter set thing because I do also, if I find them, have some new side cutters. Uh, not as sharp, but um, they do the job, pretty much. 
So, as I said, putting all the small pieces on. The door just randomly just shuts because of the draft. Like that. It's a very nice hobby blade, cuts very nice, tight. Like so. Very sharp as well, I have to admit. It's really good for when scraping bits off, like so, just here. Very nice. Well, duh, it's a hobby knife. Get on with it, I think everyone's saying. So there we are. I don't know why I'm just, like I said, I'm in the mood to just do some modelling. Start another kit, I think. And there we are. Anyway, as you know, this is one for the Midway Group build that I'm doing for Fargo Scale Models. Go ahead and follow his channel if you want, guys, because he is a great guy, Sam. Speak to him. And if you want to join, obviously just let him know because he's the one behind it. So, yeah, that's all it is, just cutting bit, tiny bits out. The only problem I've got, well, what I've faced up, is K17, this part here. That's because this was second hand and there were some bits loose in the bag. K17 is unable to be found. So, great. But anyhow, it's only just print. Is it a. What is it? Oh, that's that. That's I don't know what that is. But anyway, these ones on the left here are the hand operated hydraulic pump. So I think that's a prime or whatever landing gear operator. But really, it's not too bad. I don't know, what's that torpedo bomb slash torpedo drop lever now. I don't think so, I think that was this guy's job here. But anyhow, I'm just gonna carry on pretty much to the rest. So Got this piece going on here, got all the seats going in. I'm going to try and see if we can get this gunner's position facing backwards instead of forwards. I don't know why, I just fancy doing it to make it look like that, I suppose. Anyhow, I'm going to crack on and I'm going to pretty much do the whole entire cockpit and then we'll get all painted up. Okay, righty then, there we are. We've got most of the cockpit uh, painted up and ready. Uh, as you can see all the details and the radio compartment is actually done. It looks very nice. Now they say to put a decal onto that but I don't think I'll bother but anyhow. Anyway we're going to start painting up and I'm actually going to start on this piece. I might go over it again but it doesn't look bad. That's the seat, the main, main pilot seat sits there. The bulkhead on the back. And I'm going to be painting Tamiya's XF-71, which is cockpit green. Now, where's the other piece now? Oh, there it is. There, this is the observer seat. Apparently that will sit in there, like so. Once in place, pretty much like so. But I think I'm just going to leave that until it's all sorted out. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with some painting. Now what I always do, I just tend just to thin it down a bit with just a touch of water this. Just get plenty on like that. Now I might start with the cockpit end first. Didn't manage to find the actual other um piece for the, the I don't know, the cockpit um not an instrument, well, what the levers anyway. I could not manage to find it, don't know where it's gone, so I thought I'll just see if I can make something up on the way, which I think I might probably will do soon. It's a bit rubbish me painting now while saying that, but hey ho, so things are. So anyway, if I just even the paint down just a touch, it gives it a nice coloured look and it actually spreads paint pretty well. So I think this is why everyone likes Tamiya paint, I guess. So that's it. Now one of my things that people have actually said that I do ramble on a bit. Yes, I do. I've noticed that too. So you're not the only ones. So I think everyone can relate to the Monty Python get on with it thing that I normally do. So let's paint the front there. 
I'm pretty much going to paint the rest of it, really. Like so. Just give it a nice coat over the top. Go ahead and lay it up. And fit it down just a touch more water. Get everything into place, like so. And have it even coat. And then, of course, then, need be get another second coat on there. Just like so. Right, so yeah, that's pretty much almost that done. Give the radio compartment black as normally. Like so. Right, so I'm going to carry on with this. And we're going to see where we get up to then because I think I'll go away and paint all the other parts up. And then we can actually start by filling in the rest of the actual cockpit details. Right, so here's the two fuselage halves. I've also painted the top bit green, obviously. Now, once we put these two together, there's actually two holes in the sides here and here. They are actually for the position of the gun afterwards, pretty much. So you don't put it before, you put it afterwards, apparently, so according to this um, instructions. Now, I've had a look, and it's a very nice fit, actually. It's dry-fitted into the side walls the copper has. And obviously, you have to paint all these top bits green, obviously, before you do anything. Apart from that, Looks like it's going to go very nice together, of course, being a Hasegawa kit. We also just get some glue down the edges here, if it wants to work. Yep, there we are. Put some glue on the side here. Just a couple of dots here and there, just to see how it all fits together. And then that slots into the oh, bit too far forward. So there's a little notch at the bottom here, and it slots into there like so. Just have a quick check of it. Right, so that's into there like that. Okay. All right, so just check the other side now. Up there, all across there. Now, there's also some windows as well, they can be actually filled in from the inside, actually, so there's not too much worry about that, really. Just on that side, dab a glue inside these in two holes oh, over the top there, and in this final one just there, right. So just slot these two together. Now that has fitted in absolutely perfect. No problems at all. Wow, very nice. So just now we need obviously something now just to hold it all together. Right, there we are. That is actually two fluid slides together. And I don't think there will be need in any filler tool whatsoever. Just get some pegs if I could find some. It's trouble, I put stuff around the desk, I can't seem to find anything anywhere. So. Just pegs across the top there. This one and if there like so. I just obviously need some more pegs or a bit of masking tape just to keep it all together on the front here. So that guys is that done. So I think what I'll do is I once it's all on, I'll just take some extra fin, which you'll see in two seconds, just put this together. There we are. 
So that one's into there. That's all fine underneath there. Just have to take just a touch of extra thin. Just dab it inside the panel lines where everything goes. And it's simple as that. Simple as guys. There we are. Right, so next up is the wings. Okay, fuselage is actually done. Uh, it's been slightly sanded down to make it a nice actual smooth. Of course, it's a sander, what else would you think you'd do? But now that fuselage is done, we actually have now the bottom wing. Here we are. Now, you know, I've actually just realised the size difference between these two. I mean, look at the size difference. You know, I'm not surprised I can even get that in the shop. So, a small fuselage with these huge, great big wings that Kate has. Really weird. Now, one thing I do need to point out is uh, let's just get this. Uh, basically, at this stage, uh, if you want the flaps up or down, you can have them in the horizontal or the top positions. Uh, if you want, you've got to cut um, different holes and whatever. The main thing is what I've done is I've drilled these holes. This is going to be for the bomb rack, apparently so. Well, for the bomb rack to hold that one great big kilogram bomb. Uh, so if you want the flaps down, you've got to cut the edge out here to allow them to slot in. And then, as you can tell from the instructions, as you can see, we have to, uh, it says here, A variant remove for flaps up, B is remove for flaps down. So if you want to B, you have to cut these ones off, A. So that's pretty good. So you can have your flaps up and down. Um, another thing that I've noticed is that uh, if you want your lights to be clear, you can actually have the decision to actually cut them out or not, but I'm not too sure if I'm honest. I'm not too sure about what to do or not. Let me know in the comments what you want to do with the lights down or not. Anyhow, I'm just going to drop some glue on here, because the top pieces are here. Now as you can tell, there's from the review, there's some actually brilliant work going on where you can actually have the wings folded up. Now it's not optional, but I think it could be. It doesn't say so in the kit, but it could be. Hmm. I think that's worked for a skilled master. So I'm just going to take some glue, pop it on the edges along here, along here. Some nice bonding glue around there. Uh, okay, and this is going to fit on like so. Come your pegs. Fit <coughs> Excuse me. So that one's fit onto there. Oh, come here. Like so, and then finally, just this one across here. I think you see that in shot. Sorry if you can't. position. Oh, I hate it when you do that. I'm sorry for long pauses, well guys, I know. I always have these long pauses and then people are not happy with them. Because they find it too boring. And of course the pegs snap off. Yeah, just reach for that. Right. So, that's all the pegs done. So just I was looking. So just left to hold everything down in place in order to let it bond. So I think the next step to now is of course obviously let it dry. 
and then we'll come back and we'll put the fuselage together onto the actual wing surface. Watch. Oh, actually. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Hold on. Two seconds. Uh, I've never seen that before, and I have to go with it. Oh. Oh dear. Um. Uh, guys, we have a bit of a problem. A big, big problem. Oh dear. Oh, well done. What have we done there? That's much better. Oh. Okay, that's fitted straight in like that, no problem. Now I thought that would give us aggro ag then. So, come here. Okay, so that's that one there. That's one on there. So, in theory, that doesn't look too bad at all. Not too bad. Just need something now just to keep everything in place, really. Come here, masking tape. You'll do. So yes, a lot of problems actually already. So I think the best thing is to do is just leave everything to dry properly. And then obviously I can work out what the crack is with all this. And then Yeah, see how it goes guys, because this is actually doing my nothing right now. I'm just waiting for that peg to ping off any minute now. Right, the main wheel well, main wing. Right, main wings are done, and as you can tell, it's not too bad. Just a touch of filler on the side. Uh, had a bit of a problem with these wings, and just a touch, and it's pretty much just getting everything in place. Um, there's a bit of a lip here. I'm struggling to get that actually glued up, pretty much, because as you can tell, the clips or the pegs, whichever, won't hold that bit in place because it's so pretty much on the edge so a little slip from that I'll just take off but anyhow another problem is that underneath here uh, where the bottom wing sits the fuselage there's actually a bit of a gap in that spot guys um, I've obviously tried to sort it but I risked snapping the actual plastic off and chipping it away so I didn't want to risk that so I must have to just do it the hard way and sand everything down really which I don't really want to do because I lose the detail, but anyhow, that's how life is. Right, so the other thing is, we go put in the uh, bottom wing, well, the main elevators. So these are nice, um, it's not bad. It's actually some nice detail for here, so it makes it look like an actual separate piece apart. Now, one thing to remember that there's a little circle underneath one side, that is to go underneath so just remind you of that for do anything else and then that slots into there like so and of course as you know get it right and level like that just take this other one off obviously just give it a bit of sand down 
across the edges like so and pretty much the same again and they slot together like oh no that's not right it's good be, oh actually there we are so that's actually a pretty nice thing guys the actual two slots as you can see slot together like that on the inside just like that that is actually really cool wow that's something you don't hardly see on a kit hardly ever just going to put some glue on the inside here and obviously that will keep it both both the uh, elevators level so if one goes up the other will also go up at the same time so just testing whether it's level or not and I am pretty much happy with that it's turned out really nice wow so I'm just going to put some glue on the inside here on both the elevators and there you have it that was actually much simpler than what I thought it would do or would be, whichever one to do but uh, yeah, that is not bad that's really turned out well obviously you just got to keep an eye on it and see how it goes but I think that is particularly level guys I'm really happy with that ah, right, well with that done I guess we'll move on to something else now I'm not really much else what to say but apart from that yep, yeah, carry on <laughs>